Guys, you're not gonna believe this, but this has literally just changed my life. It's called the Uppercut Deluxe. Look at the wand, look at the wand. So basically, I'm taking the curve side and I'm going root to tip, okay? Coating the beard. This is one coat. Okay, I I'm gonna add a second. Look at the length. Do you see that? I'm speechless. I just don't think anybody will be able to compete with this brush. Gotcha! <laughs> it's just a prank. Just a little prank, you know? You actually believe that that brush could do all that? <laughs> you idiot. But no, in all seriousness, Michaela responded. I'm sure we all know why we've all gathered here today. Yeah, um, it's probably not going to be good, is it? But before we get into all of that, if you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so. I'm trying to reach 400,000 subscribers in this channel, and we're about 25k off right now, so any help would be bloody lovely. So yeah, we are going to talk about Michaela's comeback over on TikTok, but first I wanted to talk about some stuff that I've learned since my last video. So when I post that video, there was a lot of comments saying that I actually need to talk about Michaela's charity scam, or something along them lines. And it all came from a TikTok Michaela posted when everyone was talking talking about Roe v. Wade, and she said she was going to donate half the money she earned from a pallet. I have also made a personal decision to donate half of my earnings of my new glam light collection to these causes. And as we can see by this TikTok, people are saying she's lying about this donation because she blocks half the people who ask about it, and she refused to show receipts, apparently. I mean, I don't really have any proof that I haven't seen anything, but that's what people are saying. Now, the bit that definitely does seem to be true is the fact that she hasn't shown any proof of this donation, which could be for numerous reasons. I don't think it 100% means that she's definitely lied about this donation. But one thing I will say is that she definitely should address it and maybe show some proof of the donation, specifically because it basically promoted her palette, right? A lot of people who weren't going to buy the palette probably bought the palette because they knew a donation was going to be made for it and they get a product in return. So I have no doubt that it definitely upped the sales of the palette, so bearing that in mind, she should definitely reference it. Like, maybe not even just show a screenshot, just say, guys, look how good this is. We've raised this amount of money for this charity. It's not like that's uncommon. You see things like Soccer Raid here in the UK, which is like a football charity match. And at the end, they say the total amount raised for UNICEF. And it's pretty normal. You should be able to know like how much has been raised. So as much as you can obviously donate to charities without mentioning it publicly and the amount or whatever else, with something like this, when people probably bought the pallet, knowing fine well that there was going to be a donation made on top of it, I feel like she needs to show something. I would like to think that she didn't lie about this donation though, okay? I'm gonna give her the benefit of the doubt because I can't imagine a world where she would really risk it all by keeping the money and scamming her audience based on a charity donation that she lied about. Like, that seems a bit far-fetched in my head and I hope it's not true. But yeah, let's get back to the big mascara scandal, which just sounds a bit weird coming out of my mouth, doesn't it? I mean, look at the views on the original video. 51 million views just because she lied about some eyelashes. Like, if she did this on purpose, then well done. Great marketing technique. <laughs> but yeah, a lawyer on Twitter actually covered this topic and went through the legal ramifications for doing something like this, and I feel like we should probably take a read through it. I see two main issues here. Number one, ineffective disclosure of the sponsored nature of the content, and two, false or misleading claims and endorsement. Pretty simple to understand, she didn't actually say verbally that it was a sponsored post. She put a little thing in the corner that you couldn't really see, saying that she was like a partner with this company, but she didn't say it, which you need to do. And the false or misleading claims is very obvious, right? She claimed that a mascara could do something to her eyelashes that it couldn't, and she just lied and put like fake eyelashes on, so pretty easy to understand. The FTC requires that any material connection between an endorser, e.g. an influencer, and an advertiser like L'Oreal must be disclosed clearly and conspicuously. Otherwise, the ad is deceptive and violates section 5 of the FTC Act. This disclosure requirement is why we have hashtag ad and the like. A material connection is any relationship that might affect the weight or credibility the audience would give the endorsement. Idea being, if you knew the review was paid for, you'd consider that when deciding to buy. Yeah, I mean, it's no secret that when someone reviews a product, you're probably going to trust it that little bit more if it's not an ad, because they have nothing to gain from it. So that's why you will see creators going against the law, not saying that a product is an ad, because they're going to earn some money based on how many items they sell. And I'm not sure if that is the reason why she didn't disclose it properly, but I wouldn't really be surprised, because she tried her absolute best to get people to buy this product. 
book. Like, she lied about everything. Here, the L'Oreal Paris partner disclosure is in very small font and appears just for a few seconds off the video. That, to me, is not clear and conspicuous, and I would bet that the FTC would feel similarly. Similarly, similar, but, but, boo, that's a word I've never been able to say properly. Similarly, similar, what the fuck? Why do I struggle with such simple words? Similarly. Is that right? Now to the fake lashes. The FTC requires that all advertising must be truthful, not misleading, and substantiated, which, uh, spoiler alert, it wasn't. P. Michaela claims she's demonstrating the effect of the mascara and expresses her disbelief, but if the lashes are fake, she's not giving an honest review, and that violates the law. Remember that it's not just the influencer who's potentially liable for the violations of the FTC Act, the brand is too. 100%, because she definitely sent the video to the brand before she was allowed to post it, so they watched that video. And they must have knew that it was fake. I mean, they're a makeup brand for fuck's sake. So if they were okay with it, they're to blame too. Finally, I expect that L'Oreal's agreement include requirements that the influencers will comply with the FTC's endorsement guides. So it's likely she breached that contract. Yeah, I would imagine so too. Whenever I've had brand deals, when you get the brief sent to you of what they want you to say, they make it very clear that you need to say, this is sponsored by so-and-so, and you need to put this is sponsored in the description, in the first line, so you can't miss it. Like I said, the brand will get in trouble too if they don't make that clear. So I have no doubt that L'Oreal probably tried to make that very clear to Michaela, but the fact they missed it when they reviewed the video blows my mind. I said it in my original video, if I can look at the video and see that the fake, Surely anyone who actually wears makeup can. I think the most shocking part of it all for me was the fact that Michaela thought her audience were that stupid. Honestly, if I watched her TikToks, I'd be quite offended. I'd be like, what, you didn't think I would notice that? Do you think I'm a moron? But what's actually interesting is after this thread was made and after many people spoke about it on YouTube videos and TikTok, whatever else, she actually did put a paid partnership tag on the video so you can see it now, but she only did that after everyone spoke about it. But yeah, Michaela actually went silent for about five to six days after this video was posted. She didn't mention any of the drama or anything like that, but she has now returned to TikTok, so let's see what she has to say. Oh, she got the sound. I'm sure we all know why we've all oh, we do. here today. We do. It's the month of love, bitches. Anyone who knows me knows I'm not fucking around on Valentine's Day, okay? Like, these these eyeshadow looks are about to fucking hit. All right, P. Louise. Wait, 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 I'm sorry. What is this, then? She just carries on doing some makeup tutorial for Valentine's Day. She just didn't address it at all. And she's clearly taken the piss at the beginning, by the way, when she does the whole, like, we all know why we're gathered here today. She did the big sigh and everything. Like... Just taking the piss. I love the top comment on this video as well. Apparently, we don't know why we're all gathered here today. <laughs> You're not wrong. I think the reason why she has just tried to, like, brush over it, no pun intended, is because it is a paid partnership, and if she does go against her original deal, she won't get paid. So I think she really just said, fuck it, I'm getting my money, let's move on with life. And she'll get away with it, obviously, because that's how the internet works. Like, when I did my brand deal for that established titles, and then people were informing me that it's a dodgy product, I could have easily kept that video up, took the money from the brand, and realistically, people would have forgot within a few weeks. Like, I knew fine well that taking down the video and addressing it and making people aware of what the brand is actually like meant that I wasn't going to get paid and I didn't want to get paid. But I think she's probably just took the stance of, fuck it, I'm getting my bag. The one thing I am surprised about is that L'Oreal are actually okay with her keeping the video up. And I know, obviously, they do stuff like this in TV commercials and they fake it and whatnot. But with a massive scandal like this where everyone's talking about it and it's an influencer's video and it makes the brand look bad, you would assume they wouldn't want the video up. But then yet again, it does have 51.2 million views. So, uh... Maybe I'm just stupid. But yeah, as we can see, she has posted four videos since the whole scandal, and she's just kind of doing her own thing, and I have absolutely no idea what's going on over there. Bloody hell. But yeah, like I mentioned, it does seem like she is just going to move on and carry on posting her normal videos. I would love to know your opinion, specifically the people who maybe watched Michaela in the past. Are you going to carry on watching? Are you going to trust her reviews? Or do you not even really care in the slightest? Please let me know in the comment section down below. But yeah, it's crazy to me that she really did put her reputation on the line 
just so she could get like some quick money. Bit of a weird approach for me, but maybe it'll work out for the best, who knows. But yeah, if you did enjoy, please do have a like down below. Subscribe if you are new, and if you want to let me know any topics to talk about in future videos, the best way to do that's on my Instagram, it's at Calamarkey, it's always linked in the description. And honestly, I'll need as much help as I can get this month, because I'm going to try and post as much as I can, so I need all the topics in the world. So please, just let me know all the topics, okay? I need it. But yeah, until the next one, I'll see you guys in a bit. Goodbye.